One more time. What's happening, guys? Thank you for joining us. We're going to be talking some fights. Let me get some business out of the way right off the top. Eagle FC, it's going down on Friday, the 28th of January. You can watch it live and free. Just go sign up at eaglefc.com. We're in the Flex Arena right now. we got a lot of things to look forward to. If I may introduce the Olympic champion, the UFC champion. I said the UFC champion, Henry Cejudo. The current number one ranked pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, Kamar Usman. And the all-time greatest, Khabib Nurmagomedov. Guys, with that, I'm Chael Sonnen. I want to get things started because let me talk about our main event. Listen, Kamar, we got two heavy strikers. And you used to be in the room with one of them. I'm talking about Tyrone Spong. This guy's reputation precedes itself his record is damn near unblemished what do you make of his fight coming up with Sergi first let me do my thing because I'm the only one who showed up here for work today you know because I'm the only one who got the jacket on yeah, not really but you, 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 can be can style talk, can you guys came for style you guys yeah. going out after this huh? <laughs> but uh yeah absolutely fantastic main event you've got Sergey Karatanov who's got a world of experience sure. you know has fought all over the world everywhere and then you've got Tyrone Spong, who has knocked people out yep. from everywhere, all over the world. I mean, probably one of the most decorated strikers that we've ever seen. And you used to and be in the room with Tyrone, correct? You guys were yeah, teammates at one yeah, point. Yeah, it, it was, uh, I was fortunately in a room with this guy to where uh, it was striking day. Everyone tried to avoid. And it was more like yeah. avoiding it was, day. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was striking day, so you had to avoid this guy at all costs. But uh, over time, he just became a complete, well-rounded uh, fighter to where he could strike, he could grapple. And that's the biggest thing that will shock people about Tyrone Spong sure. is how well he could avoid being taken down so he can go to his specialty and use his striking. And Khabib, Tyrone's going to take on uh, Sergey Hartanov. But one thing about Sergey, and I followed his career from his days in Pride all through Bellator, he doesn't do a lot of grappling. I mean, on one hand, he's got the experience in terms of full MMA, but he doesn't really like to go to those weapons. Do we got a stand-up fight to look forward to? Like, I think this fight is like uh, two great athletes and two great strikers fight each other. And uh, I think only one thing is going to make hard for Tyrone. He didn't fight long time in MMA. Sure. This is make this, this one's gonna make difference, big difference, because you guys understand what is this MMA. You know, when you all the time striking, and uh, like for example, like big guy like Haritono, if we grab you, if we take you down, like maybe fight gonna finish. You know, of course for everybody, Tyrone is like favorite, but I think uh, we cannot. Uh, underestimate Sergei Haritonov's experience. And Henry, you and I talked to Tyrone Spong earlier today, yeah. and he talked about what Khabib's weighing in on, saying, I haven't done this a lot. I put my <clears> body <throat> through it in the training. Yeah. Is he right? Mentally, he appeared to be in a good yeah. place, in my opinion. Yeah, on paper, that's what it looks like. But you know what? Talking to that fighter meeting, uh, Uncle Cho, that dude is determined. Sure. Like, he's out there. He's got that swagger. He's, he, he even said it today at the even meeting. He's like, this dude doesn't have better striker than me. He's not better looking than me. Sure. I mean, he, he's a competitor. I think that's something that he has that people are underestimating is his level of competition. Yeah, he doesn't have 50 fights in mixed martial arts, but what he does has, he has experience of a champion. That being said, Sergey's struggling to make weight. When you struggle to make light heavyweight and you get somebody that's fast and quick, I'm, I'm leading towards Tyrone Spall. Sure. And, and, and Khabib, what do you make of that? Because that weight did mean something to me. I realize that uh, Sergey's used to be in a big heavyweight, but he was cutting down to make the limit. I mean, speed matters in there. At some point, if you're in a striking battle, and it looks like he's going to be, speed matters, and that size might slow him down. You know, it's like when two heavyweights fight and they both of them, they have background like striking game. Of course, uh, like if you're faster than your opponent, this is make big difference. And... Um, Honestly, I'm like 50-50. I'm like 50-50 on this fight. Sure. You know, I, I know like Tyrone is like 100 kilo and Haritono is like 120. It's too big difference, but I'm like 50-50 on this fight. And Kamar, you, you say you know Tyrone from the practice room, yeah. but you mentioned him on striking day. What about overall grappling day? Has he put the work in? He's put the work in, uh, but I, I completely agree with what Habib is saying. It's, that time off, it's, it's a big, it's a big, big thing. It, it's important because, I mean, you, 
there's something different about when you're inside this barrier right here. When you're inside this cage, it's, a, it's an added pressure that you feel. Sure. It's different than when you're in the, in the practice room, in the training room, and there's no, you're not in that cage to where you feel that added pressure that you can't get out, you can't get away, you can't rope a dope, you can't do some of the things that you want to do. There's a big thing to be said when you haven't been in here for a long time. Yeah. And of course, with the, with the nerves and the jitters of knowing that there's a, a guy across from you that's trying to take you out. Sure. So I, I think this is gonna be an interesting one. I have watched Tyrone train and prepare for these, you know, the last few weeks. And I will say he's looking fast, he's looking quick. Of course, the experience is there. He knows how to line you up and put that perfect strike in the perfect position and get you out of there. But I'm on the fence, too. Sure. I'm on the you. fence. Well, I looking at it now, it. too, Chell, is this cage ain't that big. I was noticing. I was that. like, man, <laughs> yes. these freaking heavy with these two Godzillas are about to go at it. This is going to be a full on war. Sure. And Khabib, I was very excited when you put uh, Rashad Evans on the card. Rashad yeah. Evans comes with some nostalgia for me. Back when I was dreaming about being a fighter, things like this, he was already fighting on TV. He had a world championship when I was getting signed uh, to the major organizations. A couple of things that Rashad has done since he retired. First off, he went into the Hall of Fame. Most uh, tremendous honor that our industry yeah. gives out. But second, guys, he became what's called a fruitarian. He gave me an entire talk on this new diet. He doesn't eat anything but fruit, fruit and vegetables. It's changed his body. He says for the better. He says he's feeling faster. He said because of this new diet is what's allowed him to do the training to get into this competition. What do you make of that? Uh, honestly, I don't know about this guy diet. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but fruit. No yeah. chicken. I asked him that. I go, no chicken. Never a candy bar now and then. Nothing but fruit wow. and vegetables. You know, it was like, like Rashad, Rashad is a legend, you know, on this sport. I remember like when I grew up, I was watching his fights, you know, it's like amazing now. Like after that, I become UFC fighter, I become UFC champion. I'm retired. Now I open my organization, new organization. You know, it's like now he's fighting in this promotion, Eagle FC. This is like crazy, amazing. This guy is like living legend, you know, for me. And uh, of course, he's UFC Hall of Fame. You know, and I'm very excited. Honestly, like, uh, I really want to see how Rashad win. But same time, he a very tough opponent. Very tough opponent with a very good ground game and heavy hands, you know. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen. And, and speaking uh, of Rashad's opponent, he's got Gabriel Checo. Checo has been uh, most busy doing grappling, real competitive grappling events. He's got good hands. He's done plenty of MMA. But he believes if he can get this fight to the ground, he's going to have an advantage. And Henry, sometimes I think we have to remind people Rashad Evans was an NCAA contender back in his youth. Yeah, I, I love this style matchup because when we asked Pacheco today uh, during a, during a fight, uh, fight meeting, he was like, man, listen, I got no game plan. I'm going to go out and I'm going to tear his head off. And if he does take me down, I feel extremely comfortable on my back. Sure. And I'm just like, man, I'm like... I'm like, this dude, he's a kamikaze. Right. Like, this dude's willing to throw out the kitchen sink in the first 10 risky seconds. Risky game plan. It's a risky yeah, game plan. Yeah, I'm just like, dude, yeah. those are the most dangerous guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And I got to tell you, one time you told me, Kamar, that one of the reasons you're in the sport, that you went to Black Zillions, that you left wrestling, was because of Rashad. I want to say you even said at one point he opened his home to you and you were staying on his couch. I mean, this has you have to feel something inside as this match gets closer. Absolutely. And, you know, a, a little nostalgia for me, too, because I, I, was, I was ringside when you and Rashad got it on back in the day uh, which wasn't that long ago sure right? yeah it, it seems like long. back in the day <laughs> it feels like back in the day yeah <laughs> but one thing you're right I was there for all of those with Rashad I was there while Rashad was still eating chicken sure <laughs> I, I, I was there through all of that and so now being here and actually seeing Rashad go through this whole diet change and and, and this whole process it's interesting because I haven't seen it in competition sure. of course I, I actually got to go in there and train with him last week where of course he's I still feel the strength and if it's changed his body so he, he's able to get his weight down and, and he looks amazing at that way but I don't know what that's gonna how that translates over in competition sure I don't know being honest I don't know I'm, there's questions of course there's, sure. there's questions and that's just what I'm putting out there of course when it comes down to picking a side that's 100% I love Gabriel Pacheco and the confidence that he's bringing. Uh, but Rashad Evans is Rashad Evans. And Khabib, you, know? you got a couple of guys that are protégés representing your father. Rest his soul, by the way. I'm in the same position. They're both looking down on us right now, Khabib. But i got to tell you, 
they have a lot of pride in that, and they got a lot of pride in country. And they were talking about Dagestan more times than they were talking about fighting or even talking about their opponents. What's that like for you, and what can you tell us about these athletes that you've seen in the practice room and brought to competition? Yeah. You know, like, for example, to, uh, like, Raimond. For example, Raimond Magamendaliev, he's going to uh, open uh, main card with uh, Anthony Njokuani, you know. This is two great strikers, you know, it's going to be an amazing fight, you know. I'm very excited about this fight because they both great strikers, you know. And uh, I know Raimond can wrestle too, but he loves, he loves striking game, you know. This guy very fast, you know, it's like... Uh, this guy put slip a lot of people on amateur career and right now couple years he just beginning his professional career already he fight everywhere in Russia Asia you know now when did you meet him to be was he just a little boy no no no, no. He, I, I I met him couple years ago he will he beginning his um, I think uh, in uh, Ushu Sanda yep. Ushu Sanda this is different school in Dagestan that when he Jump to the pro MMA, he just moved to our school, you know, because like for pro MMA fighters, you know, like of course for Walter Waits, our our school is the best, you know, like lightweight, Walter Waits, featherweight, we have not one of the best in Russia, we have like one of the best fighters in the world, you know. Sure. And he joined with us right now, he like Friday night is gonna fight here in uh, Eagle FC 44. You know, and his opponent, his opponent, Anthony Njokuani, this guy, he have a lot of fight in UFC, you know, a lot of great fights, and uh, I'm very excited about this fight, you know. Does that put nerves on you, or does that put pride on you? To see one of these young men that you got to yeah. be there with in the practice room, how, how do you feel inside? Honestly, Sam, like, of course I'm a little bit nervous too, you know, like, because, and, um, now I have to be a little bit away, you know, because, this is my promotion and I cannot, I cannot say, oh, let's go for sure. one of them, you know, that's why I'm going to be just watch and enjoy with this fight. He can't say that, but I'm going <laughs> to jump on it. I know we're not on that part on of the show yet, but I'm going <laughs> to jump on it. He's fighting the assassin, Anthony Andrew Kawani. Fun fact, one of the first, if not the, I think he is the first Nigerian in the UFC. Ah. Yes. Maybe first so, from Africa. Maybe. In the UFC, he's a Nigerian. Nigerian? Yes. So most people don't know that, but I've been watching this guy for years. I, I watched the way that they strike him and his brother Chidi and Jukwani. Yeah. The way that these guys strike, they are, I mean, it's, it's just a, a frenzy it's different. It's different. of just yeah. throwing techniques out. Yeah. Every technique, they can sting you from either hand, from either stance. And this is going to be a fun fight. So I know you like your boy Raymond, but <laughs> yeah. Anthony, let's get this one. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Think about it too, Charles. Like, man, I was, I was, when we were talking to Anthony during fight, I mean, this guy has been guys like Andy Sauer. Sure. Like, dude, Andy Good Sauer. Man. I'm like, you, you beat Andy Sauer? In kickboxing, right? Yeah. The pure I'm kickboxing like, rules, yeah. Oh. So the dude is a real deal. I mean, if, you know, it, it's, I, I, to, in my eyes, looking at the whole card, I think that fight right there is going to be fireworks. Someone's yeah. going to end up in a stretcher. And, and Henry, rounding out the main card, but we got Gibson taking on Ray Borg. These guys are fighting at 35, but they used to both do time at 25. Your weight classes, certainly you've studied these guys somewhere along the way, never knowing if they were going to be next. Yeah, and to me, this fight's going to be the most competitive now. So it's pretty cool the way it, it's been set up because... Cody Gibbs, he's a former UFC fighter. I mean, his last fight, he beat John, uh, John Dotson. Sure. You know what I mean? John Dotson, he was a, a two-time UFC flyweight contender. Yep. Couldn't beat Demetrius Johnson, but, dude, he was right there. That was two months ago. They yeah. just fought. Yeah. Exactly. And, obviously, Ray Borg knows that he fought his teammate, so he knows how good he is. Sure. I mean, he literally beat Ray Borg's teammate, and Ray knows what he's up against. But at the same time, Ray Borg, he's experienced. He's a title contender himself. And he's been there before. I like, I love the way he mixes his fighting. And I think at 135 pounds, it's going to be good for him. He's going to be able to display more of what he knows and more of what he has. And this is going to be a great fight. All right, Khabib, give us one name from the undercard. Somebody we should keep our eye on. I think I'm very excited about Sean Bunch. Sean Bunch. You know, I remember when first time I just came to AKA, this guy met me in the airport. <laughs> Sean Bunch, you know. He was your driving game to pick you up? Yeah, where did he take you after he met you? He just, he just met me in the airport and he told me I'm Sean Bunch. Like, okay, Sean Bunch. And I, 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 tell him, I didn't know English. Like, he, we don't understand each other. But I tell him, like, I remember it was long flight from Russia, you know, like almost one, one day I didn't eat, you know. And I tell him, 
let's go to the McDonald's. <laughs> you look at me, it's, what? I say, let's go to the McDonald's. He take me to the McDonald's, we enjoy, but we don't understand each other, you know? And then he say, I was, I was in Russia, I compete, I compete with a lot of Russian wrestlers. Then we become good friends, you know? Then we become good friends. It was, it was he just finished his uh, wrestling career. He just moved to pro MMA. You know, and uh, yeah, I'm very excited about his comeback, you know, about uh, his fight Friday night, you know, and uh, and he have good opponent. His opponent is record like eight and two. He's very tough opponent, you know, from Uzbekistan. And come on. I, uh, I think this guy is striker, striker, striker. He have very good striking game. And uh, of course, of course, I'm worried about him, too. And, you know, like same time, always good to see how Sean Bunches fight because this is one of the fastest guys I ever met in, inside the gyms. And Kumar, speaking of Sean Bunch, you as a wrestler were competing about the same time as Sean Bunch. Do you remember his uh, trilogy? They did that in New York when he did the final wrestle off with Coleman Scott. Do you remember oh, that? Absolutely. It absolutely. went to all three matches. Sean Bunch. Bunch the Great, we call him. Sean Bunch is a, a good friend of mine. Um, I, too, am looking forward to his fight. I, I think Sean is, uh, as he mentioned, one of the fastest, as far as quick twitch muscle guys that I've ever been around. And he's had a lot of ups and downs in his career, but, you know, he's a new father now, and, and he's getting everything in oh. order, getting the career going, and, and it's just a new added motivation for him. So I'm excited to see how he, he gets back on the horse after coming off of a win, you know, this one. I'm also excited about another fight. Demarcus Jackson sure. on that undercard, a guy that I trained with for years. He's training out down here in Sanford MMA. I'm excited about this fight. I think uh, Demarcus well, we're talking is talking about guys that are fast. Hey, Demarcus is fast well himself. Very fast, extremely well-rounded. That's the crazy thing about it. He's well-rounded. Just also had a lot of ups and downs in his career. Just can't squeak out that split decision win sometimes. So I'm excited to see him just go out there and just put on that killer instinct and, and, and you know, do well. Yeah. And Henry, someone from the undercard. Give us a name, buddy. No, I'm going to have to go with Sean Bunch. Sure. It's ironically that we all know him. He was actually my Olympic, uh, he helped me get ready for the Olympics. Training partner. Yeah, training partner. And I actually moved out to Ohio to actually train with Sean Bunch. So we have a history, man. Like, if there's anybody that I spend the most time with in that whole room, I mean, you're talking about speed, yo. I don't think I've ever wrestled anybody faster. He would duck under you, and by the time you turn around, that dude's behind you. He's lifting you, like, like serious, like sure. serious speed, like sure. crazy speed. But I think looking at this whole car show, what Ego FC has put together, it's like you're not going to see any, like, shutouts. And that's what I love about it. Everybody's going to compete. It's very neutralized, and it's very eco, and let the best man win. Yeah, well, let's close on that, because I'll tell you, I've been to a lot of first promotions. This one feels different. The buzz is different. The arena's different. The fights are going to be different. Guys, when I tell you this is live and free, I'm talking about it's live and free. Just go to eaglefc.com. That's it. Sign up. You're going to enjoy this. Now, little insight here. We're making this on Thursday. The fights are tomorrow on Friday. Some of you are going to see this tomorrow, meaning the fights are tonight, January 28th. For some of you, the fights are tomorrow. This is upon us, guys. There there is no time to wait. Spong is taking on Kantara Hanov. Rashad Evans is back. He's taking on Checo for Khabib, for the champ, for Triple C. I'm Shale P, and we will see you all at Eagle FC tomorrow at 6 o'clock.